Hey everybody, Hassan here and I'm absolutely stoked to give you a walkthrough of a prototype that we just built. Now as you can see, it's using ARKit, it's also using Firebase behind the scenes, and it's a football prototype just in time for the start of the NFL preseason. We're stoked about all of those things, but in particular, we're really excited about using Firebase. If you haven't heard about Firebase before, it's something that allows you to manage data and analytics across multiple deployments of your project. You could have uh, one single piece of data and different databases that you manage across an iPhone deployment, an Android deployment, and so on. You can also use push notifications, authenticate users, and much more. In this prototype, we're using it to keep track of a high score. So no matter how many phones you deploy this to using ARKit, all of them will have one record for the top score and everybody can compete for that. So let's dive right into the important points. Again, we're going to be talking about ARKit, Firebase setup for your project, and then last, important code snippets for tracking the high score. On the ARKit side, you can get started by going to the Asset Store and downloading the Unity ARKit plugin. Now something that you should be aware of is that there are multiple changes to the ARKit plugin, so you might run into some issues. If you do, I recommend that you download the latest version of the iOS 11 beta, and also upgrade your Xcode beta to be the latest version too. Uh, you might also be able to get away with using an older version of the ARKit plugin, which you can find on the ARKit Bitbucket. Uh, but if you run into issues, just know that the reason is that ARKit got updated recently and you can find help on the Unity ARKit forums. Now once you have ARKit in your project, there's a few things that you need to do to make sure that everything is set for deployment. First of all, in your build settings, you want to have iOS as your build platform. So you might have to select that and hit switch platform if it isn't selected already. Then you're going to want to make a parent game object and under that, move your main camera. Here I've renamed my main camera as just camera. Now on this we have to attach a few key scripts. The first one is Unity AR video and on that set the clear material to YUV material. You'll also want to attach the AR camera near far and AR camera manager with the camera set to the camera component on whatever this camera game object is. You'll also see here that there's this shop manager script that's just something that you can look at to see how we're handling shooting the footballs through the target. So once you have that all set up, you're actually all good to go on the ARKit side. And that's the beauty of what Apple has built. With just that download and those few tweaks, we're already set for our augmented reality experience. Now let's dive into Firebase integration. Again, to summarize, Firebase helps us to create mobile apps that are synchronized across all of our deployments. You could synchronize your data on Android and iPhones. You could have user authentication systems and logins. It's essentially like what Parse used to be, uh, if you've ever used Parse, but Parse, unfortunately, isn't around anymore. So Firebase is something that we can use to integrate data, uh, updates and authentications, but also more across different mobile apps that we create. To get started with Firebase in Unity, visit this URL right here and download the SDK. Once you have that downloaded, we need to actually import it into our project. So go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and then find wherever you downloaded the SDK to. Now you'll see that there are multiple Unity packages and you just want to import the ones that have features you're going to use. So we're going to import the database package. I already have that in my project. So go ahead and hit open when you see that. Now all of these other packages are for different features such as authentication, messaging, analytics, and more. You can import those if you want to add to your Firebase features in your project. So once that's integrated, there's actually some work that we need to do to set up Firebase to work with our Unity project. The first thing we need to do is go to the Firebase console, which you can visit with this link, or you can just search Firebase console and find it, and add a project. Now go ahead and give your project a name and then click to create the project. I'm not going to do that because I already have a test project 
set up. So when you create your project, when you click through, you'll have the chance to decide what you want to add Firebase to. We're going to select iOS app because we're working with ARKit. And here you enter a bundle identifier. So I'm just going to enter some default one right now. But the key point is that this bundle identifier should match your bundle identifier in your Unity project. So if you go to your Unity project in build settings, there's a bundle identifier that you can access by hitting player settings. And if you scroll down, you see that right here. So make sure that for your project, those bundle identifiers match up. Once you have that all set, hit register app. And what we're going to do next is we get a config file. So there's this plist file. Go ahead and download that. And what you want to do is drag that in to your Unity project. So you can just click and drag there. Now I'm not going to do that because I actually already have a plist file in here. You can see that right here. But what this essentially does is that when our Unity project is running, this gives it the capability to talk to our Firebase console and get all of the services from Firebase. So we're all set there. There are steps three and four, but you actually don't need to run those. One thing that you might still need to do is actually install CocoaPods on your computer. If you don't have them already, uh, what CocoaPods do is essentially handle package dependencies for your Xcode projects. So you can download them um, just by Googling CocoaPods. And you'll also need Ruby um, if you want to do a gem install. So you can just go to get, getting started, and then you'll see that there's a very simple command for getting CocoaPods installed. Uh, it's right here. And again, the reason why you need this is to manage all of the dependencies that you're going to need when you deploy and build this project on Xcode. So now let's talk about what happens when you actually have this project. If you hit database, you can go to the database for your Firebase project. This is my test project, so I actually don't have a database set yet. But I'm going to show you the database that I set up for this prototype. The name is ARKit Tutorial, and you'll see that I have these subfields here. Scores, top score, and the value right now is zero. Now this is a great visual interface for changing our database. You could also do this all in Unity, uh, but it's a lot easier to do it here. A key point to keep in mind is that Firebase is using a NoSQL real-time database, so we have a tree structure for our data instead of a table structure. That also impacts the way that we structure our data. When we're using this tree structure, we want to keep our data flat, as opposed to in table structures for databases, you want to have multiple hierarchies. You can read more about that online, and you definitely should if you want to do something fancy with a Firebase integration. But for now, we can keep it simple. Um, the way that I added scores and top score is pretty easy. You can just hit this plus button. You can add a field. If you hit plus, you can add a subfield, and then you can give it values, and you can keep this tree structure going. But again, try to keep stuff flat. So I added in scores, top score, and zero. The next thing that you need to do is configure the rules for your database. Now, because we're not actually creating a production level app, we're not going to do any user authentication. Uh, in summary, we're going to let anybody read and write to our database. Now, the problem with this is that if you use your code um, to start hitting my database, you could actually make some severe changes to my data. So I'm going to be changing all of this after the tutorial. Um, but if you just want to be able to build something and let anybody use it, uh, this is the easiest way to do that. There's no authentication. Um, it just lets anybody read and write to your data. The problem here is that if you share code with somebody, then they might be able to see your URLs. They could access your database using this URL right here, and then they can start changing your data. However, just for a prototype and a demo, this is totally fine. So set up your data hit the rules and change it to look like the rules that you see on mine so that you can have universal read and write access. Once you've done that, you're actually all set on the Firebase side. Now let's talk about the code that makes Firebase work with our Unity project so that we can update the high score, but also keep that synchronized across all of the different users playing our prototype. The magic happens in dbconfig 
inside of this DB Manager script. Now if you want to see how we got the moving target or throwing the footballs, check out the other game objects, but we'll focus on these because this is where the Firebase magic is happening. So open up DB Manager. And you'll see that at first, in Awake, what we have to do is set up some of the connection to our database. So we have to set the database URL, which you can get from your Firebase console. You can see that URL here. Next up, you want to set up where you're going to be referencing in your database. So we're referencing the scores subtree, which you can see has a top score string and then this zero value. Now you might have more in applications that you end up building. The first thing that we do is we get the top score. The way that we do this is by running functions on our database reference, which is right here, and it's a global variable, actually. So we run get value async to get all of the data on the scores subtree, and that gives us a task back. If the task is faulted, that means that something went wrong when we were accessing the scores subtree, but we're gonna assume that it's okay because we're just running a prototype. Um, and we know that it's okay when we get task is completed. Then we can do task.result.value to get all of the information from that subtree. And here we're casting it as a dictionary of string to object because I know that the structure is top score, so the string to the value, which is zero in this case. So here I'm just pulling out that top score value and setting it to this global variable that I have called top score. Now, it's also valuable to be able to update to ch based on changes that happen in that database. So one way that we can do this is by registering event handlers for different events that our database reference gives us. So here's an example right here. On db.valueChanged, so essentially if the score subtree changes in any way, we're responding with this handle top score change event handler. So here we get these arguments that tell us how the subtree changed and similar to before, we can read into them, we cast them as this dictionary and we use them to update our top score. So check out this part if you want to see how you can respond to database changes. But what I really want to get to is something that is not very well covered online and something that Firebase has a weird and not very clear way of handling. That's race conditions on writing data to our database. So imagine that two users think based on their application that they have a high score. One thinks that the high score is their current score of 100 and the other thinks that the high score is their current score of 10. Now obviously 100 is the higher score, but if both of these people try to update the global high score in the database at the same time, we have a problem. This is called a race condition, and the data might get corrupted because if 100 is written first and then 10 is written, well, we just had an error. 100 is the value that we should have. Now, Firebase handles these race conditions on the database using this run transaction method. So let's talk about that. Log score is called every time a football goes through our target. And you can see that the first thing I do is I check if the current score that we have as a global variable is higher than the top score that we've been tracking. If it is, then I attempt to run this transaction on the database. And this is the place where multiple places could hit this at the same time and try to update the global top score to be this current score that we have. So let's dive into the details of how run transaction works. It wants a transaction back. That transaction is going to tell it what to do to the database, and we form that transaction through a function. The function that we're going to form it through is called update top score, and you can see it here. Again, it gives a transaction result back, and its argument is this mutable data, or I call the variable MD. Now the key thing to keep in mind is that every user that is trying to change the high score, they're gonna go through this method and they have their mutable data value. Now, if anybody ends up changing mutable data when they're going through this method, all of the other people that are accessing update top score reset the method and we can tell them what mutable data argument they should get 
so that we can message the way that the high score has changed. Now, that's pretty complicated, so I'm going to go through a few examples to make it clear. Let's assume, in the first case, that only one person is going to hit this. So in the case that only one person hits this, um, mutable data, it's not going to be very important. Actually, we just go straight to this point where we check if the current score is greater than the top score, um, which we already checked before. So what we end up doing is we change mutable data dot value to be this dictionary where we have top score and our current score as the entry. And then we return a transaction result based on our mutable data. That goes back to run transaction and we use it to update the database. So that's the simple case, that only one person hits the database. Now let's assume that two people are trying to write at the same time, and this is going to expose how mutable data is actually important. The first time that someone hits it, they're going in trying to update the score to 100, and then let's say that somebody else is trying to update it to 10. Now the person that's trying to update it to 100, once they get here, they change the mutable data value. They're going to write to it whatever they want to write. In that case, it's a top score of 100. Now what's important about that is that the person who has 10 is then going to reset their update top score method. Wherever they are in here, update top score gets called again and it has this mutable, the mutable data from the 100 run as its mutable data. So now when we go into this if condition, top score actually gets updated based on the mutable data from the user that was running 100 and in that way we can actually always keep track of whatever the top score is. So to summarize, whenever mutable data changes, whenever this argument changes, anybody else that is trying to do this function resets with a new value of mutable data that we can set. We're setting it right here and we're setting it so that mutable data always keeps track of whatever the top score is. And that way, someone who's going through this with a top score of 100 can update that they are writing 100 to the database and also let everybody else know who is trying to update the top score that 100 is the new top score. So I know that that's pretty tricky. And honestly, I have seen more clear implementations of handling race conditions than this Usually people use locks or other things. Uh, this is a pretty weird way to handle the problem and one that I haven't really seen before. I also couldn't find very good explanations online, so let me know if you know of any, or if you have a better way to explain this, I would definitely love to hear that. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. We gave you ARKit, Firebase, and again, a football prototype just in time for the NFL season. Uh, we're big fans of football on the Fuse VR team, or at least I am. Uh, if you like this video, um, then please leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be doing more on ARKit, we could do more on Firebase, and we're also always doing more on VR. We're open to ideas too, so let us know what you want to see. Again, I'm Hassan, and happy building.